In Doug Stevens' opening presentation on 10 new retail archetypes, he name-checked Camp, an experiential retail company founded in 2018 by Ben Kaufman. Well, soon we'll have the chance to get to know Camp a bit better. Ben will be in conversation with a dear friend of BOF, Rachel Schechtman, whose own new retail startup was acquired by Macy's. Rachel and Ben are old friends and are two very passionate retailers who, as you'll see, have infectious energy when they talk about the retail world. But first, Rachel, who is an expert at sniffing out what's happening and where retail is going, will map out the retail industry trends she's most excited about. I'm happy to pass it over to you, my dear friend, Rachel Schechtman. Well, thank you for having me, Imran, and uh, congrats to you and Stephanie and Chelsea and the amazing team over there. The past two and a half days have been outstanding. So, um, all right, let's get started. So for the, the next 15 minutes, I want to share with you some uh, businesses and ideas that have been inspiring me lately. Uh, and before I get started, I'll give you just a little quick overview about me. Um, so I'll take you through a few slides and, uh, and then we'll go into a conversation with Ben. So in uh, 2011, I founded Story in New York City, which was a concept shop that reinvented itself like a living media channel. So every one to two months, we changed the entire store. I often described it as a space that had the point of view of a magazine, but we changed it like a gallery and we sold things like a store. Uh, everything in the store changed, the merchandise, uh, the visuals, everything. And then as Imran alluded to, in 2018, we were acquired by Macy's. I spent the last two years on the executive team and just left in June to uh, return to my entrepreneurial roots. Um, so, you know, for, for those who know me, I get really energized and excited uh, by new trends, new businesses and things going on out there. And, you know, something I've been thinking about a lot lately, both uh, prior to COVID and, and much more so now, is really how people want a higher return on investment of their time. They want to do more with less, and time is one thing we can't control or get more of. Uh, and so, you know, I think th the best way to kind of share with you some things um, that are exciting me is instead of talking about it, is to really show you some different businesses uh, that have intrigued me. Um, so uh, one trend is uh, around live selling. And I think we've seen a lot of this happening in China and across Asia. And there's a couple different brands and businesses here in the US, I think, doing some interesting things. So the first one uh, is called Network. And I'll play a little video for you here. What's up, y'all? Beja Velez here for Network. I'm really excited to share out these next pieces because I myself am from Atlanta, Georgia, so obviously I'm gonna love the collection. Right now, we're dropping a collaboration between New Era, the Atlanta Braves, and Migos Offset. Offset himself put his own personal touches on these pieces, and it is inspired by his hometown, Atlanta, Georgia. In the capsule, you'll see that we have some hats, a tee, and a hoodie. And to get even more into the collaboration, we have a video from Offset himself. So let's go ahead, roll the clip. Where I'm from? The next is an example from Fred Siegel um, on a network called Pop Shop Live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode one of Fred Siegel Live, powered by MasterCard and Talk Shop Live. We are celebrating emerging black-owned and women-owned small businesses and providing shoppers like you the access to discover and support their unique collections. I'm Josh Alden from Fred Siegel, and today with me I have two great jewelry designers that we carry both in store here at Fred Siegel Sunset, as well as available online at fredsiegel.com. Right now I have with me Sydney Zimes, founder of the Serendipitous Project. A little later on today we're going to have Sasha Flynn, who's the founder and the designer of Adora Dorn. That's coming up at around 4.45. So I think those first examples are good examples of, you know, different networks that are kind of ha taking a presenter approach. And I think we're seeing a lot more popping up in the social shopping space. Uh, Pop Shop Live was a darling of Silicon Valley a few weeks ago as people fought to get into their round valued at $100 million. Uh, dare I say, it's almost a little bit like QVC and Etsy had a baby. Uh, and this is kind of the vibe of it. 
Look, look at my Davis. Oh my God, it's so cute. Look at my Davis. I want your star shaker one. You mean, you mean this? It's so cute. I oh know. God. I can't. Another example that uh, has been popping up around the industry is shop shops. This is someone in store. You can close it up like this and wear it like that so you get no wind in here. And then uh, the last example is actually a company that I learned of through the business of fashion uh, called Basic Space. Uh, this is a newer company out of LA. And I thought what was kind of interesting about this, in addition to doing live selling, is they have probably over 50 plus influencers and arbiters of taste across culture and um, fashion and music and art. And you really have people mixing together both uh, new goods as well as, you know, existing previously owned goods. And you have everything from Adidas to Bottega uh, to Xenia. So um, I thought that this was uh, a, an interesting spin on kind of looking at selling in different ways. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's let's shift a little bit over uh, to talking about uh, our main event, which is a conversation uh, with camp founder Ben Kaufman. Um, full disclosure, he's uh, my best friend and, and uh, I'm on the board and I invested. So there is some bias there, but also as someone who follows a lot in the industry, I can say uh, there's no better example that I've found out there uh, of someone taking a really great integrated 360 uh, degree approach. Um, so I'm trying to click my slides, but I don't see them. Uh, we're going to play a video for for you in a moment um and i'll cue the if someone can play the video uh to tell you a little bit about camp Camp and welcome Ben, uh, who's in New York City. So let's just jump right into it. Um, we've heard a lot about people weathering the storm throughout the pandemic and quickly shifting and pivoting. And at a time where uh, businesses are struggling and consumers are changing to adapt, Camp is, I think, what, three and a half times over what you were doing last year. So can you share a little bit about what, how you've reacted to the pandemic and what's been going on at Camp? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's it's been a been a fun one. We uh, we are ending ending the year strong, way up over last year. But uh, most of our growth, all of the growth, came from things that we weren't doing on March fifteenth, um, and we started doing after March fifteenth. Um, and a lot of that uh, shares some connective tissue with some of the trends you brought up uh, in the previous uh, deck, which is you know we were really focused on 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 our community, and and when we started camp in two thousand eighteen. One of the first things that we saw, which felt really atypical for retailers, was that people were coming to camp multiple times a week. Um, and that's not something you see in, in brick and mortar retail. So we really focused on our community. And the first thing we did is we helped parents celebrate um, their kids' birthday parties by uh, coming up with 
a really amazing program around virtual birthdays for people uh, in quarantine and uh, rolled that out. That that started as just something to take care of our community, but then became a business as we started being able to uh, bring in partners and sponsors for virtual birthday parties, uh, do surprise and delight gifting programs with folks like Ally Bank and and so on. And um, from there, we started looking towards the summer and and uh, making sure kids uh, had sort of a really summer camp uh, type of program. And we were able to partner with, uh, with Walmart and launch uh, over uh, 200 videos of interactive content uh, that get, got families not only like having fun together and playing and, and, and learning some stuff, but also be able to integrate uh, that content, that activity-based content into shopping itself. And one of the things I think is interesting is, correct me if I'm wrong, but with the birthday parties and such, you know, I think you did over 10,000 of them, but brands started reaching out to you to sponsor them. So therefore creating another their revenue stream that wasn't just about selling products. Yeah, that's right. We had uh, we had a bunch of sponsored uh, birthday parties. We also, uh, again, we're, we're able to like uh, surprise birthday kids with uh, amazing gift packages at their home that uh, took a really like probably downer birthday for the year and turn it into something special. Um, so that's what you did when stores were closed. So then when stores started to reopen, um, I know you started selling tickets for so that there was timed entry and stuff to the store and doing some events outside. But with your store that's in the Hudson uh, Yards Mall in New York City, you recently did something really exciting over Halloween. Can you just share a little bit about that? Yeah, we we kind of believe that uh, uh, you know malls are entering a new era where we need we need to figure out a, a way to like drive families in and get them to have fun together. And we thought Halloween was a perfect place to test that. So we created uh, an event that was kind of built purpose built for COVID. So it was touchless, it was completely safe, and so on. We built freestanding doors. Uh, we built eighteen of them. We spread them across. Uh, over one mile of retail at, at Hudson Yards and uh, campers, family members had had uh, trick or treat bags that were RFID enabled. And they uh, it was a scavenger hunt. They ran all around the mall. They took their trick or treat bags and uh, and they scanned them on the door and a trick or a treat was delivered. And uh, they were also filling out a, a scavenger hunt card. And if they uh, solved the puzzle, they got a free toy. And it was amazing. Uh, we uh, uh, we were able to drive incredible traffic to the mall. Uh, sales were up across the center, and and uh, and uh, any, it was any juicy numbers you can. How many tickets did you sell? What did you do to drive traffic? Any any stuff you can share? It was about ten ten thousand people to the mall over the course of a, a weekend, just just for the event itself, and that during COVID is pretty remarkable. And people bought the tickets for how much? People bought the tickets for forty dollars or so a ticket, and. Uh, they stayed for two hours on end and it was amazing. Got it. So lastly, as we wrap up, I know you're just launching camp.com, uh, reimagining content and commerce and community all together online. Uh, can you just quickly share with us how that's a, a little different? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're basically uh, trying to help families answer the question, what should we do today? Um, so we're not just just a retailer trying to sell product. We're trying to help families have fun together and uh, and finding new ways to do that every day. All right. Well, I know there's something secret launching on Monday, so people can check that out on camp. And uh, thank you for for joining us. And hopefully everyone in, enjoyed a little show and tell of some new things out there. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel and Ben. It's good to see your faces up here on our big screen and the Voices Studio.